Density testing is what's going to indicate the parameters of the material and it's uh, a good indication of its physical characteristics. We all know you have to spray at that minimum density or above and if you're spraying too heavy you're not really going to be making any money. Adhesion and cohesion performance is likely what's going to dictate whether you're going to get a call back, whether it could be two weeks or six months or five years from now. The adhesive performance of spray foam is critical. It can be influenced by environmental conditions, uh, spray technique and spray parameters, uh, even equipment and material uh, maintenance and storage, as well as things like substrate conditions, whether you're spraying onto something wet or even if you have contaminants like oil, dirt, dust, or something like that. Um, there's a lot of guesswork around adhesion testing. Um, and in the past, with the tripod test frame and circular discs in the, our national standard, it was a pretty cumbersome process. Uh, the newest application standard for spray foam has a adhesion technique that is much faster uh, and cheaper to do. So we're going to be demonstrating that for you. Um, if I'm concerned about the adhesive performance of foam on a job site, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is go around and just knock on it. By knocking on the foam, you can actually hear hollow spots where you might have a blister, where there might be excessive moisture in that substrate, and that'll give you something to focus on uh, and identify if you have some issues. If you don't uh, see or observe any cracking and generally the installation looks uniform, then you want to pick some random areas to do adhesion testing on. Um, if you're getting onto a job site early in the morning, I would typically pick your worst case scenarios and do some spray onto those areas. Areas that are colder, shaded, or may have frost or moisture on it are always going to perform the worst, so you always want to be the most careful there. Once you've picked out your area of foam that you're going to test, you'll need a coring tool. Uh, this one's supplied by Pinnacle West and has the, uh, the handle on it to help you turn. You want to pick an area uh, you're not trying to push the coring tool through the material, you want to spin it. The reason for that is if you try jamming the tool through the foam, you'll be applying a lot of force on that sample just uh, with the action of the tool. So you're trying to do lots of spinning and we're pushing it all the way down until it bottoms out on the substrate. When you're taking the tool out, you want to spin it on removal. If you yank the tool out, there's a good chance it'll distort the sample as well. So we've got a nice clean uh, core of the sample. We're right down to the substrate. In this case, it's cardboard and I expect it to perform well. In years past, most people would be familiar with a wooden test disc uh, that you would be applying two-part epoxy to, waiting for it to cure, shave the face, apply it. Uh, you can still do that technique and it's still acceptable in the standards, but it's very time consuming and most guys don't have the epoxy in good shape on their rigs. The newest version of the standard allows us to use a threaded drywall anchor with a hook. These will uh, pull well above our minimum requirement and most importantly you can get them at any hardware store and it's fast. Uh, you can put a dozen of these together for about ten dollars. So in this case we're going to look at the center of our sample, drive it in, we're going to screw our anchor in so we're nice and uh, square in the middle and again uh, in years past the standard does identify the uh, triangular test frame with the weight uh, in order to apply our load. Um, you're welcome to use that if you want, but uh, the new standard actually allows for a spring scale. This one has a max force of 2,000 grams. The standard requires that the foam stays adhered with 1,000 grams of force. So all I'm going to do is hook the spring scale onto my anchor. I'm going to apply uh, perpendicular to the face of the foam and here's what's indicating our force. So we're right at 1,000 grams, and I know that's now past my adhesive requirements. Now with spray foam, that 1,000 grams of load is very low relative to how strong this stuff is. From my experience, having done thousands of adhesion tests, if this was going to fail, when you pull the tool out of the foam, the puck or the sample will come out with the tool um, and that'll be a clear failure. So generally speaking, if the foam has stayed adhered to the substrate after removing the tool, 
you'll more than likely pass your adhesive requirements. In order to test the cohesion, it's exactly the same. Um, and if you have multiple layers of foam, you would stop short of the substrate, apply the 1,000 gram load, and if the multiple layers of foam don't delaminate, then that would be an adhesive and cohesive um, pass. And once you've indicated that your adhesive performance uh, meets minimum requirements, you would indicate on your daily work record with a pass.